Hi everyone, I'm Helen Beyer. I am the Event Management Director for this year's UNI Campus Activities Board. Um, the Campus Activities Board is a student-run organization that brings you events all year long and is super fun. So tonight's event is our cookie decorating event, Nailed It. Is everyone excited? Because I know I am. Make sure to post photos of your work on social media using the hashtag you and I have nailed it or use our geo filter on Snapchat. We will be choosing the top four cookies to battle it out in a poll on our social media, so make sure you send in those photos. The winner will be getting an awesome baking, uh, like cupcake decorating gift basket. So yeah, make sure you get those in. Couple things I wanna go over before we start. Please keep your microphones muted at all times. If you have questions, type them into the chat feature and I will ask our lovely chef for you. Uh, we want all of our decorators to make sure that they can hear our chef clearly and that this is going to be super fun. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our amazing pastry chef, Christine. She's from you and I Fresh Beginnings. So I'll let her tell you about herself and then we'll get started from there. Hi, like she said, my name is Christine. Thank you for joining us today. I am really looking forward to kind of showing you some of the tips and tricks that I know. Um, I am a pastry chef, so it's about 10 years since I um, went to school. Um, I'm originally from this area, Cedar Falls, so I have a lot of UNI roots. Um, started in the dining center, just like um, some of you guys who might work on campus. Um, and I just kind of fell in love with baking and have done it for most of my career. Um, so I was on the West Coast for a long time um, in Portland, Oregon, um, working with a lot of bakeries and kind of have a wide um, why different type of bakeries, working with bread, working with cookies, working with cakes. Um, and now I'm back in this area because my family and my parents are here and that's always really important. So, um, now I get to share that with people around me who've known me for a long time. And now I'm back on UNI campus, which is a great community and, um, family here. So, um, come down, say hi in the bakery to me. I know there's that big window as you're passing, uh, Redeker. Um, and you can always like knock and wave and say hi. Um, and like I said, I'm really excited to show you uh, some cookies that I have here for you today. So if you can see here in front, we kind of have two cookies that we selected for you guys. Uh, one is a, just a UNI logo with our UNI colors, and that's the one we're gonna start off with, kind of bases, get you introduced into how we're gonna fill the bags, how we're gonna ice the cookie. And then the more advanced one we have right here is going to be um, some different flowers and uh, more colors that we'll use here. So like she mentioned before, you know, send in your pictures, let us know how you're doing. If you have any questions, she can help relay them to me and let me know, you know, where on pace we are with everything. Um, but we're gonna start from the basis. So just uh, follow me through as we go through and you should be just fine and we should have lots of front fun and hopefully your friends are there with you decorating. I can't see the screen at all times, so I'll try to continue to look at the camera, but um, so let's get started. So the first thing you should have, I'll kind of go through the supplies, make sure you have them gathered um, for you. Um, these were all stuff that was included with your kit. So we have the pastry bags that we'll use for our icing, um, and then you should have your cookies. You should have plastic cups to put your icing in so that we can do the cuttering. Um, we will need some spoons so that we can stir up the icing. Um, I did bring some toothpicks. I know that's not included in your kit. Um, sometimes I use that for um, just fixing little mistakes and kind of, you know, moving it around. Um, and then you should have your icing cutters, all the four pack of cutters. Um, and then you'll need scissors in order to cut the pastry bag so that we can get the tips in there and get them moving. Um, and then I also have some paper towels. It just helps that if I get any icing on my fingers or need to touch up a cookie, that I have some of those available to me. And then of course, I know a couple of you got different tips, but the different tips that we'll be using in order to decorate the cookies. So if you guys have all that gathered, I can kind of go from there. So. The first thing we're gonna do is um, base our cookies with the white icing. And uh, one of the ways, yeah, we could just take our spatula and a knife and spread it out, um, but it doesn't look as clean as doing it with the pastry bag. So I always suggest putting your icing in the pastry bag, piping a border, and then filling it in. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. So in order to fill your pastry bag, 
what you want to do is fold over the top so that you have a lip and then I kind of cup it in my hand. This is good for filling, but first we need to also pick out our tip. And because we're just doing a thick round border around the side to make the um, white icing, um, we're gonna go with a larger round tip. So it looks like in whatever pack you have, you have a couple of round options. I would just pick the largest one that you have in the kit. It's always nice to fill, um, put your pastry cup in there, your tip, and then cut it first before adding any of your icing. If you add your icing first, you're gonna be pushing up your tip, and then when you go to skirt out the icing, a lot of the icing goes out the side. So I kind of push it all the way down to the very tip and see where I need to make that cut. It's very easy to cut too high and the pastry tip will fall out and then you'll be out that bag, you can't use it. So I kind of just put my thumb there where I need to cut, and then cut it off. It looks like my scissors aren't the greatest, so you'll have to bear with me a second while I make the cut go through. And then you can always kind of test how far that goes down. So mine's right at the end of it. I think I wanna cut mine a little bit bigger. I think part of that was my scissors kinda of not being the best. So I am just gonna kinda of fold up the ends to make sure that I have what I need ready. So these are the icing cups to change the color later, but right now we're just using white and you should have your frosting here. So I'm just gonna fill up with my frosting, spoon or spatula, knife, whatever you have. And I know you gotta make, we're only doing the two cookies, so you don't wanna fill it too full of the icing just because you wanna make sure you have enough to color the other, other ones we're gonna use. So you said I was holding it, now I'm gonna fold the tip back over the bag. And then what I find easiest, just scoot all the icing down to the bottom. And then I just twist the bag so that it's easy to use. If you don't kind of twist the bag and push it down, then it leaks out the top and you're gonna have icing everywhere. Um, so this is just a way to stay clean. Um, so here you're just going to want, what I do is I use two hands to kind of like um, balance my icing as I go around. You want even balanced icing and it's kind of something you learn like holding a pencil. So as I hold my wrist here, I'm just going to pipe all the way around the cookie. So now that's gonna make sure I stay in the line. So from here, it doesn't matter how I fill it in. I'm just gonna do zigzag back and forth. But now when I go to spread it out, I'm gonna have that nice clean line around the side. So I'll set my bag down and then either a knife, angled spatula, whatever you guys have. You can pick up the cookie and then just lightly smear it to the end. So that gives me a clean cookie. I'm gonna go ahead and do both right now just in case we end up needing that bag or that frosting for something else. So I'll go ahead and do the second cookie because they're both based in white. I hope you guys are having fun playing with icing. I always enjoy it. You can always, uh, if you're not sharing with other people, you know, test as you're making. And it's one thing I enjoy about baking is eating it myself. So hopefully you'll be able to enjoy what you look at and take a picture so you can post it and get the competition, but then also enjoy eating it yourself. So I 
I think we'll take a little pause so everyone can okay. catch up because everyone's looking good, but we'll kind of wait a little second so everyone can catch up. Yeah. So I don't remember if you mentioned this in your intro, but how long have you been a pastry chef here at you and I, or kind of just everywhere? Yeah. Uh, so from formally going to school, it's been 10 years since I've been a pastry chef. But like I said, growing up, I always enjoyed baking and I was always kind of doing stuff. If someone needed a birthday cake, I would do it and always in the food industry. So um, since I was 14, I've been working in restaurants and different food places um, and when I got out of high school, I thought, oh, you know, for college or career, I could go baking and pastry, but it was really hard for me to make that decision because I loved it so much. I didn't want to turn it into a career because I, you always get added stress when you think of what you're going to do for a living. You know, you're going to be kind of judged on that and critiqued. And I wanted to keep it a thing I did, you know, just while I was fun. So I didn't go until I was 24, 25 when I decided yeah, it was the right move. This is something that's not going away. I really enjoy it and I want to keep it going. So um, it's been really exciting. That The nice thing, I think, is that I just, people ask you to do kind of stuff like this, something you wouldn't have thought about doing yourself. You know, I never would have opened a channel and had a blog and did any tutorials, but sometimes you just get opportunities and you end up meeting some really great people. And then you say, you know, like I did this this one time. And so I've, done other classes in Portland, um, one-on-one -on -one, kind of with people in a classroom, which was really fun on sugar crafting. And, uh, so yeah, it's been really exciting. And like I said, I love to eat it and I love to put a smile on people's face and kind of, uh, make things that people enjoy. And ex especially in time like these, when we don't get to see each other very often, small stuff brings joy to people. And, sweets and candies and pastries and baked goods always does that so yeah everyone's looking good Everyone's like licking their fingers. Yeah, I, I encourage everyone to uh, enjoy what they're tasting. I would do it here, but probably not on camera for you guys to see. I will admit I have favorite batters that I like to eat at home. Brownie batters, probably my favorite. Brownie batters, amazing. Isn't it good? Oh man, I made brownies probably last week and probably ate just half the batter. <laughs> yep. Yes, you want both cookies with the white. Yep. Right, is everyone able to move on or do we still need a bit of time? Seeing thumbs up. Is everyone ready for the next step? Awesome. Okay. So now that we've got our white done, we're going to use our icing cups to fill a little bit more icing to get our um, golden purple. So like I said, I know we don't have very much to work with, so you don't want to put very much in your cup. And we don't need very much for what we're doing. Okay, so the colors that we have here for us to use for purple, um, so blue and red is what's going to make purple. And I always start out a little bit at a time because we can always add more color. And if you notice on the back of your box, it does give you a guideline of how much to use. It's pretty liberal because we're not using that much icing, so you don't want to um, go. But I would say um, let's start with... Uh, Three red and two blue is what I'm going to start with. 
And this is probably going to turn out, I did test it earlier. It's going to turn out more lavender. I did these at the UNI Bakery and Lucky Frost. We have a lot of purple coloring because we do UNI cookies so much. If you go to any of the retail locations, any type of holidays or anything, we always have cookies. So I know we have uh, Halloween cookies, fall cookies coming out, pumpkins, and all sorts of fun. So Cassidy wants to know if we are going to be using yellow and purple for the other cookie also. Yes. Okay. Yep. And we can always make more icing with what you have. Like I said, I know you only kind of got the one tub of icing. So in order to get through all the colors, I wouldn't, you know, use too much. But... And then you just want to make sure, you know, I'm getting all the sides because when we put it in the bag, it will kind of smear and get that streak of color. So make sure you're kind of mixing it in really well. So for mine, I'm going to add one more red. So that's about as purple as I'm gonna get that one. So um, we use the bigger tip to fill the white in. And so now we're gonna use a smaller round tip to do the writing um, for the you and I. And I'm starting with the purple because I think it's easier um, to do the base of the color in purple and then outline whatever color you're gonna do. So in this case, it will be the yellow or the gold. And this is going to be all the same technique of filling your bag, making sure you have it cut just in the right place, folding it down and filling it up. And in my case, the most difficult thing is going to be using my scissors here. But still, I want to test to make sure I'm kind of cutting it just right. And if we didn't have a tip for a lot of just the round ones, we could always just cut a hole and kind of use that for writing, which we might get to later today if we don't have enough tips. I know I kind of have a set of tips, but depending on what you have at home, we might get to that point. So same thing, I'm gonna fill my bag. And then once I twist it um, how I want it, then I'm just going to squirt a little bit out before. You always kind of want to test out how it's flowing and even maybe test out like how you're writing before you move on to the cookie. It's just always good. You don't want to make a mistake and then realize you wanted to practice. So I kind of squirt a little bit out into whatever cup I'm using. That way if I need to reuse that frosting later, I can. And then in front of me here, I have this parchment paper or I have my paper towels. I can kind of practice on what I'm doing because I'm using, you know, the parchment as kind of my setting for you guys. What I'll do is I'm going to use um, my paper towel and just make sure I like kind of how it's coming on, gauge how fast it's coming out. And then to just with you guys practicing, balancing, how to use the pastry bag and balance. So I'm just going to do outer line for my U and I like how that's coming out so I know I feel pretty good about it so like I said I don't want to waste too much of the icing so I'm gonna stop there personally but you can always kind of scrape what you used off and then put it back in your bag so that you can continue to use it 
So I'm just going to push the cookie that I'm using closest to me. And then one of the hardest things with writing is just making sure you get it straight um, and make sure that, you know, you're staying on just like anything, you can kind of line it up any straight edge you had. So like if you wanted to take a pastry bag and use that as a line, that way you know you're going all the way to one side or the other, um, you're kind of keeping it centered. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with the U. Um, and basically what I'm doing is I'm using block letters. So I'm gonna go and outline the U and then fill it in. Um, and then we don't have to worry about, you know, taking a knife or anything to smear it out. Our lines are already created. So hopefully you guys can kind of see that right there. How it is. So what I've done is just created the outer outline and then I'll go back in and then fill that in. That way I don't need to smooth anything out. And then like I said, sometimes this is what I like to use the toothpicks for. You can always kind of spread it out to see, you know, if there's any gaps or, you know, you made your line too big. Otherwise, you can always use kind of your pastry bag depending on um, the tip and the size of it. So then, once you got that down, we can move on to the end. So like I said, I try to use like big block letters. So I always try to think in form of an outline. And same thing, I have that outlined in. So I'm just gonna fill it back in. And then I can use my tip here and make sure it's gone all the way to the edge. And you wanna use enough, uh, leave enough space. You can kinda see on my cookie in between the U and the N because we're going to go back through with the yellow and do a whole nother border around it. If we get it too close now, we're not going to have enough room for that yellow border. And then I... Okay, so I got my U and I base done. So I'm going to move on to um, decorating the yellow and maybe we'll give some of you guys time to catch up. If you're still working on the UNI, don't sweat it. I'm just going to be here making the next icing coloring and then I'll check in with Helen to make sure you guys are kind of all caught up before I go on to the outlining process. So, so here's my other one I got set up and luckily we have yellow so it will make a pretty nice gold. And again, I'm just starting a little bit at a time. We have time to kind of add more icing and more colors, so. Everyone's cookies are looking so good. They look awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to see the pictures as they come <laughs> through. I'm not sure exactly how all this technology works. Luckily, I have this awesome cameraman doing all the heavy lifting for us. Shout you out to Pat. Yeah. Is everyone able to keep up really easily? We're looking good. So I don't know if you guys have any feedback to give me on how you're doing on your tips. I will use another round tip um, for the border of the yellow. And if you don't have that, like I said, we can just cut um, a hole in the pastry bag 
a small little hole at the end and that can be our center line. So whatever you have, don't sweat it. I know I have one left in my set, but it is a little bit larger one. So I might even myself just go ahead and cut a little small hole in my bag. So Christine, what's your favorite part about being a pastry chef? Uh, I think, um, you know, always hearing back from people is my favorite part. I do um, have a farmer's market booth stand here in Cedar Falls that I run in the summer. This is my first year back. Um, and I think, you know, that just gives me, you know, a lot of times you make something, you give it away, um, and you don't always get to hear back. At the farmer's market, every week I'm seeing a lot of the same people. Um, and I think that's really gratifying to kind of hear like people come back and say that bread is the best bread I've ever had or like asking for recipes. So I think that's part of the best part. Just, you know, brightening people day, giving them simple, simple. It's simple for me to make a dozen cupcakes and give them away or for a lot of people who like to bake, they can go in their kitchen and bake cookies. And I think, like I said earlier, sometimes that's the small stuff in life that we do for other people that really make a difference, you know? You don't know what kind of day they're having or what they're going through. And I've always noticed with like baking and pastry, um, it does make a difference and it makes me feel good about myself and it makes me feel like I have something to kind of contribute to a relationship or to society. And um, I've been able to use it. I, um, in Portland, um, I was there for 11 years. And so I volunteered with the Ronald McDonald House, which is a charity for kids with serious illnesses that have to be close to a hospital so that they can get um, care. And so I would go in there um, two or three times a week and just have cupcakes on the counter so that people come in and they can enjoy the treats. And, you know, it's like, even for them, you think, oh, you know, their family is going through a really hardship, you know, their kid is not doing well, but still them coming up to me and being grateful for just the cookies or the cupcakes or the desserts, you know, was really kind of inspiring for me that they could be so positive about what they have going on. So I, for me, honestly, that's probably the best part and keeps me going because I work third shift. It's weird hours working this. Um, when I was doing bread baking, the same thing, I would go to work at two o'clock in the morning, get off till 11. Um, you're kind of off in your own little world a lot of times when you're doing baking, so you got to have something to kind of keep you going. And so I definitely really enjoy that. And you get to try so many new things, you know, you, you know, you, we have the age of technology where we can go on YouTube and find out how to do anything. So if you're interested on in learning how to decorate a cake or do other cookies, there's always something that you can do there. That's awesome. I know I'm just having fun just watching this. Yeah. Yeah. So now that we've made our um, gold or yellow, um, this is a color that we can use for the other ones. And like I said, I didn't, in the set that we have, I just went ahead and cut another hole so that I wasn't using up any other tips and wasn't using one that's too big. So just same thing. Squeeze all my icing to the bottom. I'm just going to test a little squirt out. Same thing. I'm going to practice on my paper towel. Okay. So I'm happy with how that's coming out. So, um, so now I'm just gonna go back through and do the same thing we did before. I'm just gonna do the outer border, kind of brighten it up a little bit. So I'm gonna try to use a lot of straight edges. So here I'm just gonna make a straight line and stop. And you know, if you're practicing with a bag or you're familiar, a lot of it has to do with how much pressure you're putting on the bag and then when you're stopping the pressure to pull up. That's gonna um, allow you not to have so much frosting come out when you're done and dragging it and have excess. So, and the same thing too, like with the pastry bag, you have all this excess here, which sometimes gets in the frosting. I'll always clean that off with my hand or the paper towel, um, just so that it's not smudging the other icing and kind of getting in that.
So I just went around and did it twice because my um, hole was a little small and it kind of built it up the layer of the amount of purple that I had. Okay, so I have my border here done, um, and I did kind of, I think I have another UNI sample up here. You know, it kind of looks basic how it is now with um, the UNI writing. So this one I just put a little border and alternated the purple and the yellow. And then here, you know, I put a panther paw and a little heart. So I think, you know, it can be up to you guys what you feel good about putting some of that extra in. I really like the border. And I'm going to see after the border if I have some room for some panther paws. So because we already have the round or like writing tips on, we don't need to switch anything out. We can kind of just decorate from there. And you should kind of have that nice ring around the whole edge to kind of prop up those little dots um, from that first border we did. Switch colors. Okay, so I got my border here done, and I got the U and I done. So what I'm going to do here, I think I do have some room, and I think time to kind of play around and see where you guys are at, but I'm going to do the panda fox. I love doing it. I see a lot of eating of the icing and not icing <laughs> cookies, Isabella. We've got some people eating cookies already. Yay! <laughs> Too delicious to resist. Okay, so I just add some panther paws for fun as we were doing it. So what I did is four little dots and then a bigger dot in the center so that we created that panther paw. And maybe Helen can let me know if people are kind of caught up on that design because it will take us a little while to prepare our next bags and do some of our icing colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on that. And if people are catching up, they have plenty of time while we're still doing the icing colors of the other cookie. So we should still have quite a few cups. We've only used two. Um, so we're gonna use a little bit more of our icing because we're gonna need green color next. How's everyone's cookies looking? I think people are kind of close to being done. I'd love to see them. Ooh, Cassidy's is looking good. And just a reminder for everybody, if you send in photos using the hashtag you and I, Cab nailed it, 
um, or the GeoFilter on Snapchat, you'll be able to be entered into a poll where you could possibly win um, a baking gift basket. So remember to send those photos in. Yeah, and you can never have enough baking supplies, and you always have enough people around to eat everything you bake, so I'm sure you'll want one of these baskets. And the basket's pretty cool. I went shopping and picked it out myself. You'll see it on our <laughs> cab Instagram. Go take a look at it. Ooh, that one's looking good. Okay, so I have my green done. We already, if you guys should still have some purple and yellow left. So the only other color that I kind of have in that mix is an orange. Um, but feel free to mix up the colors. If you see something you like, you want to kind of include. I think it's the design we're going for and you can switch it up. But again, on the back of the box, it also tells you how to mix and match certain colors since it doesn't have all of them. So for orange, it's calling for red and yellow. Kayla's got some cool Halloween looking cookies going on. Yeah, Halloween is my favorite season, so I love that she's in the spirit. I think she's got a coffee mug there too. She went in. Um, I'm not seeing her right now, unless she's on a different page. <clears throat> Where is she? Oh, there she is. Abby, there better not be frosting all over that living room when I get home. <laughs> okay. So I've got two new colors mixed up, and then I'm just going to get my bags ready for the next one. Um, like I said, you're okay to kind of do how the colors however you want. This flower in the center right here, that's going to be um, a, what this one's calling a petal tip. Um, I usually kind of know them by numbers of what they are, but it's going to be kind of like bigger at the bottom, smaller at the top, angled up. So I'm going to take that one out of the package. And it's in this other set too. So no matter what set you have, you should have that tip available for you. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to move on to the next cookie, so I know how everyone's doing. All right, we may have to wait for a couple stragglers. Yeah, and if you guys are enjoying this, you know this isn't the only you know technique and way to decorate cookies. If you want to get more elaborate, a lot of people like to use um, royal icing, um, which is powdered sugar and egg whites, and it's really way to get a smooth top. Um, and then you can also make that same thing with powdered sugar and just um, vanilla, water, or milk. Um, it just takes longer to set up. That egg white kind of stiffens the icing. Um, I feel like it doesn't always taste as good um, with the royal icing and the egg whites. It just doesn't have as much flavor. So I personally use the powdered sugar, vanilla, and water in my mix. It just takes a lot longer to set. So for us doing this, it's great because we can decorate on top of icings, on top of icings. If you were to do that other method, you have to do like we did here, that base white, and then let it sit maybe six hours before you add another color layers on top. And that's mostly because the colors will bleed together. And then over time as that cookie sit, you're not gonna get clean lines because it's just gonna bleed out of all the lines. So um, it's still very fun. I always do it for a lot of the holidays. You know, we have Halloween coming up, we have Christmas coming up. So if you're enjoying this, I would suggest keep on playing around with what you know and You'll be the talk of the town with all the cookies you bring to all the celebrations, so. So like I said, I'm not started on the cookies yet, but I am just getting my icings ready with the colors that I wanted. So.
So um, for my flower, I want that petal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that bag as we're waiting for people to catch up. So just to clarify, we're starting with the petal tip and yellow frosting. Uh, orange frosting, orange frosting. Yep. but like I said, it's kind of up to you depending on what you want your flower colors to be. I think we're okay with that. I like the variety of colors. I really like how it looks with four colors, so that's kind of what we're doing. And then we have a leaf tip for the green that I made. So like I said, in both tips, this should kind of show you kind of like the design that it makes right by the tip itself. Um, so you kind of know what it is, but. So Helen, I think next time I'm gonna have you decorating side by side with me. I think everyone's gonna wanna see what your cookies would be like. Oh, I'd love to. Okay, the same thing, I'm just getting my bags ready. So I'm gonna add the green that I have. And again, this is the leaf tip. The nice thing is we're using a lot of cups, so hopefully we don't have a lot of dishes at the end. Frosting can make a mess and you never usually wanna put fro frosting down the drain because it can clog up your drain with all the grease from the butter and everything that's in there. And then I am gonna switch out my bag for, you can see here the purple ones. I ha I'm using a different tip than the round tip. Um, so depending on what you have for bags left, I know that included in your kit, you also had a Ziploc bag and that can be used as a pastry bag. And if you have some in your drawer too and you kind of want to use different tips, it's the same thing. It's just plastic, it's a little bit thinner, um, but you still just want to use a corner of your bag and cut to the size that you want. So this one's called a star tip that we want to use to make these little rosettes. And there's quite a few of them in these kits. I think I have three different of kind of that same tip to choose from. So the same thing, I'm gonna kind of, it, it's a little bit wider in the um, bags for the like Ziploc or baggies. So you want to really make sure you start out small with your hole. So I kind of have that wedged in there and then since I don't have a lot of icing and I already have this going, what I'm going to do is just add this to the bag. Um, it's definitely not as clean or as pretty, but it will get the job done. And then the same thing with the yellow or the gold, um, we can use another tip for that. And if we don't have that, you know, we can just stick with a couple colors. Um, and then I did have these little dots here in the middle. So maybe I'll just leave that with the tip that we have, the round tip, and we don't need to worry about switching that. But looks like I got everything kind of set up how I need it. And then I'll just check in with Helen here to see how you guys are doing. See if you're ready to design some of these flowers. And we'll do some testers first before we move on to the 
to the cookie and I have an extra cookie here I can kind of show you on so that you can see. Does everyone still need a couple of minutes or are we kind of ready to move on? I'm seeing a couple head nods. Okay, I think we'll take a just a couple minutes to okay. get all the colors ready. So I know we talked about your favorite part of being a pastry chef, but what is maybe the hardest part or yeah. not, not so much glamorous part? Yeah, so I would say the hardest part, and you know, you've probably heard this before, is that baking is a science. And unlike cooking, where you can be cooking on the stove, you can add your ingredients, you're baking chili, it just doesn't seem right. You can add more chili powder, you can add more salt, you can add more sugar. Um, with baking, it's not that way. Once you put it in the oven and it's baked, you have to make it again if it didn't turn out right. Um, and so it, it adds a, a level, you know, of expertise that you kind of need to know what, how things are turning out and different atmospheres too. Like I said, it's because I did, um, live out in the West coast, things like humidity and temperature really affect your baking product, especially when you're talking about like breads, um, you know, that affects how long it takes to proof, um, even just flour, there's, um, the hydration point. So how much water is the flour soaking up? And that depends on the weather. It depends on the flour lot. So a lot of times what I've had to do um, is write down like, okay, on the flour bag, this is the lot number. So I knew this was all made in a certain batch. And so I know when I'm going through and making that, it's going to take, you know, an ounce more water to make this product, where if I switch lots, you have to do that kind of conversion. It's always a testing method of knowing, you know, what you have. I, a lot of people at home, you know, they're just following a recipe and if you get a good one kind of standardized you can use the same thing but as you're baking in a profession and you have a large batch you know we're using big mixers just at you and I we have a 200 pound bowl mixer I've used up to a 500 pound bowl mixer and the same thing with like what we make the pizza dough in and we make you know all the doughs for the bread I mean they're I mean I can fit in these mixers so they're really large um and so when you're making something in that big a batch, you have to be able to feel the dough, know what it's telling you, and being able to make these adjustments. And, you know, there are no set rules in front of you. You kind of just have to know what you're doing and kind of know the science behind it. So I would say that's the hardest part um, because you don't want to mess it up. You don't have to make it again. And you don't want to be all, all that product. You know, if you're making such a big batch, you know, that's 50 to 75 pounds of product that you have in there that, there's a lot of a lot of money and waste. So, uh, Josie wants you to re go over the frosting tips for what colors you're using. Okay, so what I have set up right now is um, I reused the purple that we did the U and I line. I did put that one in a Ziploc bag just because I think you guys were only given four of the pastry bags, um, and so I used the star tip on that one. Um, which over here, if I can show a picture of it, it's like a drop flower tip. And that's what we'll use for these rosettes on the side. And then for the yellow, I've kept that in the same one. I haven't changed the tip at all. It's the same bag that we did the outline in. So just a cut for a little hole. And then for the green one, um, I've done the petal tip. And I believe it's just called, it's called the petal tip on what I have here. It's called the leaf tip on the other package. And then for the orange is the one I have the rose tip on. So it's bigger on the bottom, long kind of a narrow and skinnier on the top. Okay, awesome. I think we're ready to go. Okay. So I was going to go ahead and kind of show you on this blank cookie just how we're gonna do that cookie before we move on. And I kind of suggest that you guys practice if you want before you move on to your cookie, if you kind of wanna test it once or twice. So what I have on this other cookie, it's two layers of the flour. So I start with a base um, of the orange and it depends, you know, our cookies are really big and that's kind of the focal point of the cookie for me is that big um, flour in the center. So what I do is, the the, the larger part of the tip I have angled down, and the skinnier part I have angled up. And 
I'm just going to kind of make like a, a hoop up for my first one and I'm just going to do one at a time and leave part of the center. So if you kind of see that there, so that whole center is empty and then I got room. When I go back through and add that second layer, it will set right in that empty spot. And then I'm going to go and match that same where I was at and do another one, kind of like a bow, like half of a bow that you would look at. And then just keep going around and make a full circle. And these are really big cookies, so it's gonna be a pretty big one. So there, that's gonna be the outline of just that first layer. And then I'll go back through, and I'm already realizing right now I'm using a lot of icing. I'll be able to kind of scrape this off here and add it back to my bag to put on that final cookie. So it's gonna be the same motion and the same design. I'm just gonna go back in through those blank spots that I kind of filled in, and then go all the way to the center. So then here I have that two layers, which I think really gives it a lot of dimension. It kind of builds that flower up to make it more realistic, I think. And then here I added a dot, but I'm not gonna do that so that I can add some of this frosting back to my bag and then do that all over again, just on my final cookie. You got a lot of concentration going on, it looks good. Like I said, I'm just going to do that same thing I just did. Just do it here on the cookie that we have the white icing on. So I'm done with my orange for now. And then we still have our white tip that we used for that border around that first cookie. So that's what I used in the center of this cookie just to make a little dot for inside that cookie. And then from here, oh yeah. So here we have the flower, the dot in the center, and then once we start adding some of those other flowers, they'll start to come together. So what I'm gonna do now is move probably to my purple, which are, you know, the big rosettes here. Um, and then I'll go back through and then fill in with the leaf tips. So this one's pretty easy because it's just in a circle. Um, but what you wanna do is you wanna start in the center and work your way out. If you started on the outside of the rim and worked your way in, it's gonna be more like a top of a cupcake because you're gonna be kinda adding layers as you go. So I'm just gonna kinda pick center my cookie where I want it to go. So I want one here. And like I said, I'm gonna kinda start in the center where I want it. And then just follow that all the way around. Kind of until I hit that other flower. Kind of take up that space. And then it looks like I have three, two larger ones and one small. But I'm just kind of looking at the setup of my cookie and what I have going on. 
So I'm going to do another one right here. Start in the center. How's everyone doing? Able to keep up okay? Seeing some head nods. Everyone doing good? So I have two of the rosettes and it's the same thing for the smaller one. I kind of just move it over to the other side of the cookie. And as you go down, you just want to twist your bag to put pressure on the rest of the icing to come out. So that's my purple for now. And we can always come back and use more purple if we need to. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in with my leaf tip. And like I kind of mentioned earlier about using the icing and piping bag, it's kind of all about how much pressure you put with your hand on the bag to know how much and how fast it will come out. And then also when it to stop and then pull the tip away. So that's gonna be really important with this leaf tip because um, in order to kind of create the ruffles and the leaf, you wanna kinda of screw it three times, pull up a little bit each time. So if we can get the camera to follow. So you put a little bit of pressure, you stop, move out, and a little more pressure, stop, move out, and then the last. And that's what's gonna create kinda of that layered look of that, that leaf there. So I'm just going to go in and kind of just go around and put the leaves wherever I want them. I have four here, kind of just all about the different parts of the cookie. And I often like to put them kind of like a crease where the the fold of the flower goes in. Just makes a really nice point to put that. And then I'll do, even though that's not there, I'll go ahead and do one right here because I think it needs a little bit of color right there. Such a graceful technique. I know mine would not be yeah. that nice. <laughs> yeah, and it's hard. The frosting that we're using today is a really loose frosting. Um, I kind of wanted to be able to show you guys, but um, I did have a little cup here of powdered sugar. It's something we can kind of do in the future and I wasn't sure how much time we have. If your frosting is really loose like this, what we can do is just stir in a spoonful of thyme and that's what thickens your icing. Um, so you can kind of get more detailed. On these sample ones, you know, I did make with the UNI frosting and was able to thicken up. So that's why you'll probably see in some of the designs, you know, it kind of has a little bit of a sturdier look. But it all depends, like you said, with you know, the technique and stuff that you're using, but yeah, it's still really fun and uh, look at these designs. So I have three of the colors down, what I have not done, and are we good with people um, catching up I kind of? about maybe a minute. Yeah. A little, a little bit. Yeah, and um, you know, like I said, with technology, we kind of have access to everything. You know, if you Google online, which I'm sure you guys do all the time, and there's a bunch of flower charts and it tells you what kind of tips to use and I haven't bought them yet, but I know like if you go on to Joanne Fabrics or Michaels, they actually have tips that will just shoo out different flowers for you. So it's like a drop flower. So you just put your, put whatever tip in your piping bag and squeeze it out. And it's kind of like a preset flower for you. So when I was shopping for the gift basket that we're giving away tonight, post your photos, make sure you do that. Um, there was a pastry bag. It wasn't really a bag, but it looked like how you would use a needle, and you just put the frosting in there, press down the needle, and then it just like comes out whatever yeah. tip that you want. It was awesome. Yeah, and um, like there's so many different ways, and I know we're kind of just going over the basics and stuff today, and I didn't want to use too many tools that you guys didn't have, but I did bring um, a squeeze bottle as an example because people often like to use squeeze bottles as a way to apply icing as well, um, especially if you're using really loose icing. Um, like with that royal icing that I talked about, this is a good way, to, a technique that we call flooding. So you'd still make the outer line and then you'd take a really thin icing and flood in the inside so that you just get a really smooth, clean top. So lots of ways to do stuff. I think we're good to go on. Okay. Everyone's ready. So I'm moving on to some yellow. You can kind of see I have little dots here 
like little pollen and different stuff. So that's what I'm going to do to kind of fill in these gaps in between the leaves and the flowers. And then um, if I have some icing at the end, I might go ahead and switch the tip and make some of those little rosettes too. But because we already have this bag set up, I don't want to move it. So it's just going to be pressure and lift up to make those dots. And it doesn't matter, you know, whatever room you have is what you do. Like this one, I have room for three little dots there. So that's all I'm going to do right here. I'll probably only add two right here might be like four. Alyssa's group. Let me see that cookie again. We got some creativity going on. I here. cannot wait to see these cookies. <laughs> I'm not sure how this is recorded, and I know that um, oh, man. you know we'll have the pictures up. So thanks for participating. And that's the good thing about pastry. There's so much creativity. You know, I um, working at UNI. You know, we work with a lot of student people, um, students, and you know, I always ask them, you know, what what's your major? You know, talk to them. And we have a lot of art majors that are there, and I always like to talk to them. And I'm like, it's just like using a paintbrush. You know. We bake cinnamon rolls, and when they come out of the oven, um, we brush them with um, apricot glaze, and that helps keep them moist and not dry out. And I, we use what looks like a paintbrush. So this is a great way to kind of, even if you're you know, not an art major, you don't think you have much creativity, it's a good way to kind of have a little fun, like all those adult coloring books that come out, and all those ways just to kind of relax and do something fun while we're quarantined to our room sometimes. A lot of licking of frosting going on. Alex, I saw that. <laughs> Ooh, those look awesome, Allie, Summer, and Paige. Okay. So I have a lot of these dots left. I left two little spots so that I can go through and make another little rosette again. And I'm going to see how big this... Um, white tip is to kind of go through. You can kind of see I just put a little bit of speck on top of some of the white ones. So I won't do it to all of them, but I'll do it just for a little bit. And even though it's a big tip, I'm able just to put just a little bit of pressure and pull up right away. But it's just a little bit. Is everyone close to being done? I can't wait to see these. Abby, that looks awesome. Okay. So. So I am going to go ahead and switch and just do one last bag because I have it here. If you don't have it and you're getting done with your cookie, you know, fill in with what you have. I'm trying to kind of replicate what we have here in front of us. So it's just going to be that last little rosette. <laughs> I think I've just seen him eat frosting the entire time. I don't think I've seen him decorate. And the same thing, since I'm done with that yellow bag, I'm not remaking icing. I'm just going to squeeze out what I had. And remember, as we're wrapping up here, remember to take some photos and post it to you and I tab snap. I can re-enter, I'm oh, sorry, you and I can have nailed it. It's been a long night. I can re-enter that in the group chats. We'd love to see everyone's photos. Okay. So, like I said, lastly, I'm just going to do these other little rosettes in the um, yellow gold color and just to fill up the space. Um, and it's going to be the same technique as the ones in the purple. I did get a little bit on my leaf, so this is where I always think these toothpicks are really handy. So I can always pull that back. 
and you cannot see the mistake that I made. Okay. So in here, you have the cookie. So that's what I have for both these cookies. We have here the two cookies. I guess I can put them back to kind of similar. So I hope you guys had fun. Kind of concludes what I have for you today. And I know that Helen kind of asked me questions and hopefully I don't have any here waiting for me, but um, yeah, like I said, I work at the UNI Bakery. So as you're walking by, I always feel free. Of course, I work late night. So 10 o'clock or later, you see us there in there baking. There are day bakers. but And if you do want a job, we're always hiring good people. So if you thought this was fun, you can come do it for a couple hours a week and help us. We do have those Halloween cookies coming up. So get that little promo. Uh, yeah, exactly. Get that. We, we always enjoy help. So <laughs> we will take it. Well, awesome. Thank you. I'd like to say thank you to Christine, our awesome bakery chef, for showing us how to decorate our cookies like a pro. Um, and also to Pat behind the camera, who you can't see. He's been a rock star so far. He's doing a little happy dance. Um, yeah, like I said, just make sure you're taking photos and uh, use the hashtag you and I cab nailed it. We'd love to see your photos. Top four people we're going to put into a poll on our social media. You'll be entered to win a baking gift basket, and that'll be sometime, I believe, Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. So be on the lookout for that. Our next event, we'll be showing Baby Driver at our drive-in movie October 15th at 7 p.m. in the south parking lot of the GB Pack. All cab events are by registration only, so make sure you go onto our website on the Student Life page and sign up for that. There's only a limited number of spots, so do not sign up late. Um... And that's pretty much all we have for tonight. Thank you guys for joining us and we really hope you had fun and make sure to check out our other events this year. Awesome, thank you.